The Little Stranger is the first of my novels with no lesbian element, and I was I was conscious of that while I was writing it because, of course, um, I know I'm known f as a lesbian writer, and I've done as much as anybody to to use that label, to em employ that label. So uh, for for months, every time I've done an, an event with with a lesbian audience, I've been apologising in advance for the fact that The Little Stranger has no lesbians in it. But I'm hoping that you know the things that um, lesbian readers liked in my other books, they'll still like in this book. To me, it still feels very much like a Sarah Waters novel and even though there is a heterosexual romance in it it's a pretty awkward one it's a pretty odd one and the main female character Caroline is for me is an interesting figure sexuality wise you know she's clearly not a sort of mainstream heterosexual woman um, so in an odd sort of way I think The Little Stranger is is quite a queer book um, which I hope will make it sit very comfortably alongside my other more obviously lesbian novels. I often refer to The Little Stranger as a ghost story, but that's kind of shorthand, really, because I, as far as I'm concerned, it isn't a ghost story in the sense that there's a, there's a, there's a ghost clearly, clearly haunting it. It's a haunted house novel. There's something haunting Hundreds Hall, the house in the book. Um, but as, for me, it seems to, it's something a bit stranger than a ghost. And really, the book is, is partly, it partly tries to decide what it is. It's narrated by a country doctor, Dr. Faraday, who has a very skeptical take on the supernatural um, experiences and, and sticks, to, sticks to a rational view the whole time. But I think as readers, we're encouraged to read beyond his very rational take on things and, and make our own mind up about what exactly the supernatural thing is at the hall. When I was doing my research into the 40s for The Little Stranger, I was struck by how often um, the issue of class came up in people's novels and diaries uh, in the post-war period. And it was a very exciting time in, in class-wise. You know, a new Labour government had been voted in, the NHS was on the way. For working class people, I think it was a time of exciting changes. But of course, for more conservative, upper middle class people, the landed gentry, it was a really alarming time. They felt that the world that they knew and wanted was slipping away from them, was slipping into chaos. They felt in peril, really. And it was really that sense of them being menaced by something as they understood it that, that made, you know, began me thinking about how I might be, be, be able best to structure a novel about, about the period as a ghost story. You know, my upper middle class family, the heirs, uh, really are being menaced by something in their, in their home, um, as well as being under attack by the social changes of the period, which is buying their land and building council houses on it. Um, so it was, for me, it was, a, it was an interesting way of exploring a particular set of issues. Hay is brilliant. I love hay because um, it's just such an extraordinary thing that you know taking over this small town, which is in itself a, a very pleasant town to visit if you're a book lover, because you can just spend the whole day going from bookshop to bookshop. But the fact that it then transforms itself into this sort of literary jamboree um, with 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 writers from all over the place is very exciting. I like meeting other writers, and I especially like meeting readers. I always enjoy. Uh, hearing readers feedback on my own books you know that's so it's hey is a great opportunity to do that there is the other side of course which is that it's you know writing is a very solitary um, activity and probably most of us take to it because we we like the solitary life so suddenly then to be um, to be put on a stage can be quite alarming sometimes uh, it's, a, it's a, a whole aspect of the writing life that you have to get used to, I think, as a writer. Well, my writing day tends to be very structured. I'm pretty disciplined about my writing. I find that I have to be, really, in order to write at all. You know, I can't just sit around waiting for inspiration because it would just never arrive, really. So I have to make it arrive by, by writing. I, I treat writing as a job. You know, I get up and I have breakfast and then I'm at my desk pretty early in the day and then I just keep writing until I feel like I've achieved enough which when I'm writing new material is I aim to write a thousand words a day which is about two pages which sometimes I can achieve quite easily and sometimes is really hard work but I'll keep at it until I have done that because then I know that I'm producing I don't know 5,000 words a week you know 10,000 words a fortnight and so much of my writing is rewriting actually that it's um, I like to get that, that base of words down in order to come back to it and, and knock it into shape. So the, my writing life has very distinct phases. There's the new material phase, there's the, there's the rewriting, there's the research. And to a certain extent, the whole writing process moves between, between those different elements um, until the final phase, which is then kind of manic rewriting of a, of a complete draft, which can go on for four or five months. 
every writer probably starts off as a reader. You know, they're, they're, we're all readers at heart. We all feel passionate about writing because we feel passionate about reading. And that's certainly true of me. You know, I've enjoyed reading all my life. And I'm not one of those writers who can't read other writers' work while they're writing. I've never found that a problem. In fact, I'm always desperately reading good writers in the hope that it'll kind of rub off on me, you know, rub off on my new book. So I read a lot for research, inevitably. I've been reading a lot of 40s novels and diaries over the past few years. Um, but I I've always have a book for pleasure on the go. At the moment, I'm reading Mary McCarthy's The Group, which is a fantastic book, which I first read about 20 years ago, but which I'm appreciating so much more now I'm a bit older. Um, I'm in a book group, so we read a book a month. Um, our next book is a Diana Attill memoir. So, you know, a bit of all sorts, really. I'm, I'm happy to have books come my way that I wouldn't normally choose myself, but then you, I think you'll often find real gems like that. Having fairly recently finished The Little Stranger, I'm, I'm doing a lot of publicity at the moment, and I can't write when I'm traveling and, and promoting a book. And actually, I think it's a good idea to have a break from writing. So at the moment, I'm thinking about the next book, um, I'm reading, um, I'm mulling over different ideas. And I've really enjoyed, set, you know, I've set two novels in the 1940s and I've really enjoyed the decade. But I think I'm, I might make a move for the next book and I'm sort of thinking I might go a bit earlier. Um, not as far back as the Victorians again, much as I love them, but possibly 20s, 30s, very much a pre-war period to see how that feels.